I'm Nicholas Lodge. Welcome to Mastering the Art of Patchwork Cutters. During this 13th of our Instructional Sugar Art Series DVDs, we'll explore the world of patchwork cutters. During the presentation, I will be showing you how to correctly use Patchwork Cutter Collection to its full advantage. So you can take a very simple design like this and create something fabulous like this. The Patchwork Cutter range of cutters is made and developed by Marion Frost, an English cake decorator, and uh, there are many dozens, in fact over a hundred, Patchwork Cutter designs. When buying the Patchwork Cutters, uh, they come packaged like this. Uh, they have a little illustration there, so you can actually see the design of the items that you're meant to have in the package. This also makes it useful if you are mixing up the cutters so that you know which is, goes with which particular set. When you use the cutters, uh, these are just broken apart, just almost like making a plastic uh, aircraft or some type of model, so you just take the relevant pieces apart. And normally I would recommend once you've taken them apart to store them in the Ziploc bag that they come in with the design so you know which, is, which goes with which set. Because there are many that are very similar, you don't want to obviously get them confused. In um, making patchwork cutters, there is a recipe um, in the packaging for Mexican paste. Mexican paste is almost like a very simple gum paste. It is made on the table uh, with powdered sugar and uh, can be made with gum tragacanth, which is what was traditionally used, but you can also substitute tylose for this. And this is what Marion recommends and uses for the patchwork cutters. I typically, when I make patchwork cutters, um, I make up tylose paste uh, with tylose powder and this is what I use in all of my classes for making flowers and decorations and I found this is very successful for patchwork cutter techniques. Also because this is a little bit more elastic and uh, in consistency than the Mexican paste, I find this works extremely well for things that you want to be uh, wrapping around the cake or when you're making three-dimensional flowers because there will be more flexibility and give with them. In also the 15 books that Marion Frost has published, um, there is also a recipe in the book for the Mexican paste. These books are very useful as they will show a project and then they will go through the step-by-step -step technique of how you actually create the various flowers. So this is uh, a recent book for 2010 and this highlights some of the new particular products including the fantasy flowers that I will be showing in this DVD but uh, these books are very useful to work with. There is also an additional book which was published with the embroidery and lace set which goes along with the embroidery set which is done as an independent book. But as I said, there at this time of uh, producing this DVD there are 15 books in the series. The Tylo's gum paste recipe you will find on our website and uh, that is, as I said, made. Uh, if you were going to use a commercial pre-made gum paste, um, I would recommend uh, using, this is the Albedusta gum paste, uh, this is a pre-made gum paste and I use this also very successfully for doing patchwork cutter designs. This is a very white gum paste so this is also works extremely well when you're making designs for going on a white rolled fondant wedding cake. As far as special equipment you need for patchwork cutter techniques, it actually is relatively simple. The one thing I would really strongly recommend is the KitchenAid Pasta Sheeter. This is going to enable you to make uniform thickness pieces of paste. Usually when we do patchwork cutters we either use number 4 or number 5 and I will talk about that a little later on in the presentation. But if you are trying to roll out the paste freehand it's very difficult to get a uniform thickness. Uh, this pasta sheeter affixed to the KitchenAid mixer and I will be showing you how this actually works in a little later on in the demonstration. Um, in addition to that you're going to need uh, something to roll the gum paste out on initially. This is a cell board I use in all of my classes for making flowers. You could use a non-stick board or even a plastic placemat can be used. So just a plastic surface like this to roll the paste out. Usually I would also recommend using a second um, plastic board something like a small cutting board or again a plastic placemat because one of the surfaces we will be putting some vegetable shortening like Crisco on to actually cut out the designs and it's better if you're doing a large project 
to be able to sort of roll out with cornstarch on one board and then Crisco on the other board so you don't keep having to wipe and clean the board. The other very useful important piece of equipment is this small metal knife tool. This is actually a dental tool. It's something that we sell and I use in all of my classes. And this is very useful when we're removing excess paste from the patchwork cutters. So as you can see, it's relatively um, basic equipment, a rolling pin, a few basic gum paste tools. But there's not a lot of very uh, complicated equipment we need for patchwork cutter techniques. In preparing the gum paste for preparation for the patchwork cutter techniques, I'm here having some white gum paste, but of course this could be any color depending on what project you're going to be doing. So first of all, we will condition the gum paste. I will add a very small amount of vegetable shortening to it. I would need this on a non-stick board or on a plastic placemat. And then usually I would use a little cornstarch, just dust it onto the board, and I will roll my gum paste out just a little bit first. When using a pasta machine, remember you always have to pin the paste out to the approximate width you are needing it. So like if you were doing a project like, for example, a swan that was maybe three inches high, this gum paste would need to be rolled out to approximately three inches in width so that when we pass it through the pasta machine, you end up with a long strip. The pasta machine really doesn't do much in making it wider. It's going to just make the paste longer. So once we have rolled the paste out, so you can see how I've rolled this out, we're then going to feed this through the pasta machine. Now the pasta machine here is set on setting number one. So what I would normally do is I would go through the pasta machine on setting number one first. Then I would then change to setting number three. And I would then go through a second time. So this is now making it, you can see, a little longer and thinner. If your paste feels a little sticky, you put a little cornstarch onto this. And then we will go through on number five. Now most projects we do with patchwork cutters are passed through on number five setting. Number five is used for all basic cutout items, especially things that are put on to create like a jigsaw puzzle technique, which I'll talk about later when I'm doing decorations for cupcakes, petty fours, cookies, I'll generally use number five. Decoupage techniques, example, lettering. Number four is another thickness I use only for items that are freestanding. So when I demonstrate, for example, things like the teddy bear, if I was doing swans, if I was doing flower fairies, I would use number four setting. If we're using number four setting, I normally pass the paste through number two, then number four. If I'm going to go to number five, which I have here, I go number one, number three, then number five. When you are rolling a large sheet of paste out, then you can take some of this paste and you can then cut this into smaller pieces. This could be put into a plastic flap. This is, for example, a Wilton practice board flap. This will stop the excess gum paste drying out. You can also use like a plastic page protector or two sheets of vinyl. So again, this can be used to put the paste in. If you're working with large quantities of paste and have many pieces cut out, you could also put a wet towel on the top of this to stop it drying. Once we get our paste rolled out and prepared, we're then going to put a little vegetable shortening. This is some Crisco. This is going to be put onto a separate board and you need enough Crisco on this board that the actual paste will stick to the Crisco. You're going to lay the paste down. As I explained in the introduction to the equipment, the reason I do this on a separate board it means then you don't contaminate your main board you're rolling out with, with vegetable shortening. The vegetable shortening that we have left on your finger, you can just take a little bit of this and use on the cutting edge. So just a very small amount of film on the cutting edge. Now generally when we use patchwork cutters, this is a wild rose, this is a design I use in, for example, my introduction to rolled fondant class. When I'm doing a design like this, sometimes I keep the design as a whole complete design and then other times we do what I refer to in my classes as the jigsaw method where it looks a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle and it cuts out the components. When I'm doing a design that I want to stay as a complete item, so for example if I was doing things like flower fairies where I do not want the fairy to become dismembered and the arms and legs drop off, I would normally use number four paste there so it's a little bit thicker 
but what I would do is I would press just very gently onto the surface of the paste and then once you have done that, so you're just going to press just pre gently onto the surface, so this is going to emboss it and then we just press around the perimeter only so what this has done is it embossed the design onto the flower so you can see here the design is embossed but I haven't actually physically cut through all of the designs here I've just cut around the perimeter of the flower when you are doing things uh, like the jigsaw method or when I teach the decoupage flower we do one like this so this will stay as a complete flower and then the second part of this decoupage flower we want to make in sectional pieces so what we do here is we press firmly all over so what this will actually do this will mean that when we cut out the we take the cutter off this actually will be cut all the way through just like a jigsaw puzzle so you have all the components but they will actually go back together to make a complete flower taking my metal knife tool then I will just pull away the excess paste here and so this will just be pulled away so this will then give me my two options so as you can see they both look exactly the same but this one here as you can see stays together as a complete flower whereas this one if I just gently tug on here these pieces will come away almost like a jigsaw puzzle so when for example I teach the wild rose I can actually just scrape away and pull away the pieces of the wild rose that I don't need. So you see this is how you would create almost like the jigsaw puzzle method. So those are the two options we always use for patchwork cutters and depending on what type of project we're making would depend on whether you use the first method which is to press gently, press around the perimeter so it stays as a whole, or whether you press firmly all over to create like a jigsaw puzzle. After you have finished working with patchwork cutters and need to clean your KitchenAid pasta machine or for example if you had been putting black gum paste through here and then needed to change to white, you would need to clean it between the two colors. The way to do this is put it onto number one setting which is the thickest, widest opening. I would use a counter spray that you use to clean a food surface, so generally this is an alcohol based but obviously it's something you could use for sanitation and for food. And then I would turn the onto speed and I would actually run the napkin or paper towel underneath the pasta machine. So this will clean the rollers, removing any residue of color. This is very important to do this on the underneath. You never ever want to clean from the top because if you're using the napkin on the top, this can get caught into the pasta machine and actually can then rip out the gears from this. So always clean from underneath. Never use water on this, usually some type of counter cleaner would be used and uh, sometimes when I'm doing a very dark color like red, sometimes I will actually just spray the cleaner while the rollers are going around and then go underneath with the napkin and that will take the residue off. You always want to do this while the um, pasta machine has just been finished with so that the obviously the residue of paste on there is soft and it will come off easily. If you leave this to dry for example overnight it would be difficult to remove that. But especially this is only necessary on dark colors like going from black to white or red to white. If you're going from white to pale pink it wouldn't be necessary to clean between the colors. In making freestanding items, we have several options. Now, usually when we are doing a freestanding item, like a flower fairy, the polar bear I'm going to show you now, bunny rabbit, and teddy bear, pirate, any of those designs, we are normally going to use number four on the pasta machine because we want this paste to be a little thicker. Remember, the higher the number, the thicker the paste. So most items are passed through number five except for freestanding items. So this is some gum paste, I have some white gum paste, this is number 4 thickness so it's a little thicker than number 5 that we use to show you the basics of the wild rose. So this would be used in exactly the same way, a little vegetable shortening goes down onto your secondary board. This is a polar bear or bear, you could use this as a brown bear, a grizzly bear, or black bear or a polar bear. Little vegetable shortening onto the cutter. Now this is going to be done is a complete item, so we don't want to dismember the bear. So we're going to just gently press over the surface area, just like I did on the first wild rose. And then we just press around the perimeter of the cutter 
this will just cut around the excess, the outer edge. So you see we have embossed all of the design onto the bear, so you can see his eyes and his nose and all these details, but then we actually physically have cut around the edge with the cutter. I will then remove the excess paste, so just pull away with my, and this should come away cleanly. Of course, when we use number five, that's a lot thinner, so it's going to come away a little cleaner, but you can see it will come out very easily. Also, sometimes you will have little small areas like here, and the way I usually do that is just use a straight pin, and you can use your straight pin almost like an X-Acto knife, and that's a really good way to remove any little small areas rather than trying to use a larger knife tool. The pin works extremely well to cut away pieces. When we are making things that are freestanding, like for example when I teach the flower fairies, if this was a flower fairy instead of a bear, we would just put this onto a piece of fun foam. Fun foam you can buy at a craft store. Uh, fun foam is a good surface because it is slightly porous. And uh, what we normally do is we leave the design maybe for about one to one and a half hours. And then once it's dried a little bit on one side, I would then flip it over and then so the back continues to dry. So after approximately three to four hours, the piece could then be taken like this. It could then be either painted. I'm going to be showing um, some various cakes, like so for example on the pirate cake, they were painted. Flower fairies we do with dusting powder dry. You can also uh, do these with gel colors. Um, so you have many, many options or combination of both. So that is one option just to leave the design like this. And then when I teach the flower fairy, we actually just push the dry fairy into a soft fondant grass bank, and then the fairy is supported. Here on the polar bears, which you can see here, on the polar bears, these polar bears actually, because they are on a cake with an igloo, I have just some little blocks of fondant behind them. So those are actually just going to support, and you can see here the snowball I have here, and then a little block of fondant. That will just support them while they obviously are on the cake. So that is one option, that is just to cut out a single number four, and that's the only thing you have to do. And then the second option is that we can put the bear, or the bunny rabbit, or whatever we're making, onto a toothpick. So the second option is you can turn the design over as soon as you have made it. And then we will take a little bit of edible glue. Now the edible glue recipe is also on our website. And you will put a little bit of edible glue just generally in one area of the bear. If it was something that was larger, you could use two toothpicks. I will take a toothpick. This is a Japanese Asian type toothpick with a carved end. So I will put the toothpick here like this. And then I will take a small patch of paste, so this is actually just like a little small band-aid of paste, and then this can go onto the bear, and this can just be attached to the edible glue, and we will then leave this upside down to dry, and then once this is dried upside down, this means that then you will have, for example here is a rabbit, so then you will have basically a rabbit that would be on a stick and then this could actually be pushed into the top of the cake. So if you didn't have a support system behind it, like in the case of the polar bears, you wanted it completely freestanding, this is the method I will often use. So that is one option uh, to make this on a toothpick, just with a single design and a little patch of paste. And then the second option we can use is we can take the toothpick still in the same way, and then we will brush some edible glue over the back of the polar bear, all the way over, and then we will take actually a second image, this will be a second polar bear, that would just go in on top. So this will go over the top here like this. So you can see what we've actually done here is we have sandwiched the two polar bears with a toothpick. This actually is a little neater, and especially if you're going to see the back of the design, this is going to make a neater back. So you can see here on the rabbit, this rabbit was done as a double, double image, and so then I have the toothpick in the center there, so then your rabbit could be stuck into the top of the cake, for like a baby shower cake or an Easter cake, and of course then it would look very attractive from the back as well as from the front. So here is the Santa I was talking about. So on Santa, he was cut out number four with white gum paste, 
and then I applicate on top of that the red, the skin tone color, the black, and also the brown for the sack. I will be talking about texturing the gum paste prior to cutting out later in the DVD, and, um, but this is then finished off with white royal icing to create the fur effect. So that is the Santa. Here we have the pirate. Now the pirate there, that was just cut out in number four. You can see here I have two pirates. I have one freestanding on the front, and then I also have a pirate on the top, but those were both done number four. The pirate here is actually being painted. Um, I used a combination of gel colors and dusting powders mixed with vodka, and this was then painted, and was along with some silver and some hologram dust to give some detail to the top of the pirate and to give some dual embellishment onto his saber and hat and things. Here we have a space cake. This is made with the space astronaut set. These are just cut out number four. They're dried and then these have been dusted again with paint in uh, with your gel color mixed with vodka. In the case of the astronaut and you can see here the space shuttle, I just made a small slit in the fondant and I then attached them and use some softened fondant just to support them. But because of the slit in the cake, they actually will sit perfectly in position, just using one thickness of paste. The next one we have here is going to be the flower fairies. And on the flower fairies, uh, this is a class I teach, we have here the fairies. These have been uh, made in white, number four. Also the mushrooms on the front there are number four. And then these have been let dry and then have been dusted and painted with some gel color. But because we want more pastel colors, I've used just uh, dusting powders for all the, the skin tone and the pink and the white and some super pro to accent. Here are some other examples of freestanding items. Here we have the teddy bear picnic. So we have the panda and teddy bear on the front and then also the teddy bear on the top. So these would of course also be done number four thickness. And uh, this, these are just single layer thicknesses. The panda bear has actually been done a little bit like I explained about doing the bunny rabbit and showed you that. So I've actually done him in white and then built the black on the top to give a secondary layer of color. This could additionally be done with painting or with uh, using an edible food color pen. I'm going to now show you some techniques of embossing. This is some uh, rolled fondant. This is Master Americana. I have rolled out about an eighth of an inch thick and I have just cut this out with a long octagonal plaque cutter but this could be also done directly on top of the cake. So you could cover your cake with fondant and then you would have a surface to emboss on. This is a dancing couple so I'm going to put this dancing couple onto this plaque and then actually just emboss the design onto the fondant so this could be done as I said, if you've already got the cake covered, this means you could actually build your patchwork cutter directly onto the cake surface. So rather than having, and if you do need to go back, um, if it doesn't emboss evenly, you can usually just line that really easily. But uh, just make sure that you do this. And this could also be done on buttercream as well. So you can actually emboss this um, onto the surface of a buttercream cake. So this almost is a little bit like, think of like paint by numbers, but this is like patchwork cutter by numbers. So we actually then would be able to cut out pieces using the jigsaw puzzle method and then build onto the top of this design. The advantage of doing it this way, then for example, like the rabbit that I demonstrated, is in a situation where you have the cake covered, you can work on this straight away while the cake is still soft and then the whole thing can be finished. Whereas if you cut out the dancing couple, for example, with number four on the pasta machine, then you have to really wait for it to dry to physically attach it to the cake. So this is good if you already had your cake covered. So this is, as I said, embossing techniques. We also use uh, patchwork cutters to, for example, emboss fondant. So these are, for example, cupcakes. Cupcakes are very trendy and very popular at the moment. These are both being embossed. Um, is on fondant. Typically I fill my cupcake with some type of filling and then actually cap it off with buttercream and then I would then cap that off with a thin layer of fondant. So if you are using fondant you would then roll the fondant out. I have here some hot pink and this is for example from the, this is called the teddy bear plaque and this particular set has uh, two of these like swirly designs in 
and then also it has two flowers. And actually this little flower, which I will be showing later in the DVD, these flowers are cut out using this small blossom from the teddy bear plaque set. So if you are doing a, for example, cupcake, you then you can just go over the surface of this, and this offers an alternative to a textured roller, and there's some really attractive designs you can use. And so then once you have textured this, you then would cut out with a round cookie cutter, um, usually approximately about three inch diameter, depending on the size of your cupcake, and then that will be capped off on the top. This is, for example, the daisy. This is from the fantasy flower set. So this was done on white fondant, and then I went over with some super pearl, and then I just painted the center of the daisies in with some yellow gel mixed with some vodka. So that gives me this daisy design on each of the daisies on the cupcake. Uh, in the music theme, so with the same music set which comes with the dancing couple, this is some musical notes which I have then embossed onto some green fondant for the top of the cupcake, and then cut out a black uh, triple clef which I will be demonstrating on this DVD because that's done in a different technique and uh, but this is that is also used as an embosser. I also have here um, a cake board. This cake board here has been uh, embossed ready for a double cake board ready for a cake to go on to. Um, so what I've done there is I've actually used the hydrangea. This is from the spring flower set. So this was literally just embossed all over this pale apple green fondant. And then on the top board here, I've actually used a veining tool and just made a vine. I've embossed with the hydrangea. And then I have here a small leaf. This little small leaf is actually from the wild rose set, which was the wild rose I showed at the beginning of the DVD. So there really is lots of potential and ways you can use the patchwork cutters, not only as cutters, but also as embossers. So sometimes when I'm doing a cake, I'm able to emboss the cake board with a design, and then I would then use the same cutter as a cutter on the side of the cake, for example, to uh, emulate the same, take the same design through from the bottom to the top. When doing sometimes designs, you can actually take um, some textual details. So here I've got the little small scrolly version of the bigger one I showed from the teddy bear plaque. And then you could actually emboss this over your gum paste. This is number five on the pasta machine. And then I'm then going to use the end of the veining tool. We could use a toothpick to make polka dots. So if I was doing something like the dancing couple, then if I wanted to give textual detail to the dress, rather than just leaving it plain, when you then cut this out, this would mean the dress would be as I said, textual detail. And then uh, what we would do is, um, here I have the cake, you would actually take the design, this is actually on top, directly on top of the cake, and then uh, brush edible glue, and then just build up appliques. So these are just built up, all number five pieces. So what I actually do is cut out the black, the white, the skin tone, the hair color, and then here you can see the texture on the dress. And this was just applique directly on top of the design that we embossed onto the cake. So this means like 15 minutes after you've embossed the cake, you have your design finished. Then you can go in with a little gel color and paint it so we don't have any drying time and you have your finished cake. Later on, I will be demonstrating the lettering techniques, how to use the patchwork cutter letters properly and to finish off the top of the cake. And on the cake board, I have some embossing with the musical notes. And I have then some cut out musical notes on the side.